Hello again. Welcome to another edition of Arts and Ideas. I'm Sue Swinand. And we have a great show lined up for you today. As you can see, we're going to do something a little bit different. And it's going to be a focus on all things guitar. And uh, my guest today is Dan Hunt. And he is, his artistry is multidisciplinary. It's visual and musical. And uh, he's um, a terrific guitarist, but he's also uh, performing all over the area, and he's a teacher. And uh, also, he is a very gifted and creative luthier, which uh, I am in love with this craft that he does. It's, it's so uh, am amazing. Oh. <laughs> but. Um, his guitars have been exhibited, and uh, it's D D R H guitars, guitars mm -hmm. and uh, they're collected by connoisseurs all over the country. So I'm so happy that we're able to do this, Dan. And thanks well, thank for you. thanks for joining us yeah, today. My pleasure. Um, I guess we should start by telling the audience, you know, how to get into this racket. Well. Uh, well, like, like all kids in grammar school, you know, you start out on the flutophone and then uh, work my way up to trumpet. But uh, essentially in sixth grade, when I realized I couldn't play Led Zeppelin on the trumpet, I dropped that and, you know, played guitar. So, so you were listening to a lot of music? And uh, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, actually, my sister uh, at some point gave me all her records. So oh, my uh -huh. first musical stuff was like, you know, Jimi Hendrix and Cream and the Beatles and... So basically, you know, guitar stuff. So I immediately, all I ever wanted to do was play guitar. You know, it's a guitar hit you as the love yes, of your so life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a ble Gale. yeah that's true. <laughs> it's, a, it's a blessing and a curse. And, uh, and then essentially, I don't know, when I was 14, I uh, started working or got my first carpentry job. So which basically carrying wood, you know, stacks of wood on your shoulder. But anyways, so um, and out of high school, I got into carpentry. So. Uh, you know, I've always played guitar and I've always cut wood. And um, I don't know, probably somewhere around early 2000s, I was able to do an apprenticeship with uh, a luthier in Berlin, Mass., uh, Glenn Nelson, who, um, and as we all know, an apprenticeship is, oh, you, you work for free, <laughs> but you learn, and that's the yeah. trade-off. So, so I did that for years and then went out on my own. And so uh, it was nice to be able to combine the, you know, music or playing with the instrument mm -hmm. kind of thing. Mm -hmm. and, um, so you're really from a, an artistic family, though, and I know you have such a sense of design and uh, craftsmanship, and uh, are there other artists in your family? Yes, well, my, uh, oh, I called him my other crazy brother, <laughs> is a great artist, uh, Clifton Hunt. He has a, a still life paint studio where he does uh, you know, essentially, uh, you know, like Dutch masters or yeah, you, well, you've he's seen his really work. a yeah. craftsman and yeah. a and, uh, wonder, wonderful oil painting. You mm -hmm. can, you can see his work around Worcester too. Uh, yep, and uh, so he's, you know, you know, well, like I said, I think he's probably the most talented in the family because I'm, I'm always blown away, you know, when I see his stuff. But it's nice that you have that in your family, you it, know. Yes, yep. And and then my middle brother's the genius. He actually worked at MIT for 25 years as an orbital analyst, rocket scientist, whatever. Yeah. So. Yeah. So anyway, so. Um, you know, so it's uh, it's been fun. Yeah. Cause, uh, you know. And his wife, uh, Galadriel, is yeah, also right. uh, from a musical yeah. family. And yeah. uh, tell us a little bit about her. Yeah. Well, well Gail plays bass, and uh, I think well, she's always played guitar. I think as a kid, she you know received a guitar, and her, her dad is Norman. She grew up in the yes. yeah. Her dad. Yeah, is uh, Norm Shell, who played in Clean Living. Yeah. Who was you know quite successful, and you know so very musical singer songwriter. Yeah. And even Gail's mom and all her aunts sing sang and played at church. And Gail and he still play together. Does she always play with you? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're in so many different bands. Tell us about the different groups you play in. Yeah, well, uh, initially it started out, we played with Norm in uh, Youth Well Spent, which was, you know, doing his stuff. And then uh, we started uh, with Little Red, uh, Little Red and the Riders. Oh, I love that group. Yeah, yeah. which is uh, Jump, Blues, and Swing. 
And then uh, sort of, we also do Jubilee Gardens, which is uh, all original music written by Jubilee Connolly. Uh, it's kind of, I don't know, I call it like hippie, jammy band stuff. And then uh, recently, while well, we played with uh, We and Mrs. Jones, who Mrs. Jones was a great singer. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, she moved back to Texas, but yeah. fortunately, we got a new singer, Bruce uh, Reed. It's so, such a wonderful art commu uh, music community. Uh, how do you feel about Worcester as a, a, a city for the, for the musical arts? Well, it, it's actually great. There's a long history, uh, like we can, we'll look at later. Uh, well, Peter Clemente, that is his uh, guitar, which is a 1930 Gibson. So basically, uh, Peter was an educator, but he literally was the first electric guitarist in Worcester and Massachusetts, New England. Who knows? It was 1937. So. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Wow. A long history and also a ton of venues. You know, you can go out and see live music with Beat the Stars any night of the week. <laughs> yeah, well, well, like everything, if it's out there, if you look for it. That's you know, right. There's all kinds of If you of have stuff. the interest, you, it, yeah. that's great. Mm -hmm. So um, all these different bands, that's the beauty of it is you're so versatile, you know. And you've collected guitars for many years, too. He's really... Uh, a historian about the uh, the music and the guitars and so yeah. you had a show of your guitars that you exhibited at the Futon yeah. uh, Gallery yeah. in Worcester? I, yeah I did a few shows there where um, I don't know I probably put up 30 to 40 guitars stuff I've built repaired like I said the artistic approach uh, like well the guitar behind me uh, you know was one well, I... Well do you want to show what w one of yeah, these? Certainly. Uh, um, well, this is, uh, oh, essentially it's a Les Paul copy, but the neck uh, came from, uh, well, this uh, guitarist Jim Perry, you know, his, his headstock had broke a oh, few really? times. So um, on, I think it was like the third time we decided, well, instead of re fixing the neck, we'd put a new neck on his guitar. So this is a real Les Paul neck, and I, and I had a body, and so I glued it on there, and Oh all, my God, how do you do that? Uh, yeah, well, all these parts actually came from my basement or, or my workshop, as I should say. No. Um, so, so you have such a collection yeah, of yeah. pieces. And uh, essentially, well, my sister had a, a purple Corvair as a kid, so I, you know, so I picked purple. But uh, the best part is, well, I mean, with the J Jones sticker, but so anyway, so I, uh, well, I call these Franken guitars because you just take a bunch of parts, put them together, and make something out of it. And, That's um, so cool. Yeah. And these are like the 70, you know, disco knobs. And it's like found art, you know, where you yeah. put things together and it comes out new. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What were those little reflectors for? Anything? Uh, this stuff. Well, yeah. these are just cover plates. Like, this is how you get at the electronics. I see. I but see. I, but I had like mirror I see. stock, and so yeah, I did that. Yeah. And, and then this, I don't know, you know, depending on how I feel, like this is like little pieces of plastic, and I glued them together and did all this stuff. And afterwards, well, because there was a hole there, so just I to, see. But afterwards, you go, well, geez, why did I do that? I don't know. It was fun. <laughs> That's exactly the way you make art, though. That's right. You had to put something there. Yes. The, the, the guitar says you've got to put something here. No, you've got to put something there. You follow what it needs. Yes, the yeah. aesthetics, yes. Absolutely. So, uh, are you going to play that one at all, or what's that one sound like? Yeah. yeah so it just so that's know, the whammy bar. That's the whammy bar, and uh, I don't. We, well, there's a, a famous guitarist from Worcester, Duke Levine. So this is this is the Duke Levine lick. He goes. Kind of like you know rockabilly. My but, kind of music. Yeah, yeah. But, but this is essentially okay. like my rock guitar, and like, like I said, it was just sort of a, a fun project. So when you perform, are you mostly using the electric and the... Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, well in Jubilee, I, I play uh, a Selmer-style guitar because it's a little more, um, well, acoustic. And, and actually, I play all kinds of guitars, really. Okay. <laughs> so, you know. Shall we get the Selmer out? And sure, certainly. And what does that mean, a Selmer-style? Uh, that's the, um, like the company who made them. Yeah. Uh, like, you know, and what's the distinctive feature? Um, well, the Selma guitar was designed in the 1930s uh, and really was designed to be uh, a, a jazz guitar. And 
before amplification because like well with that guitar that's the first guitar with a pickup so before that I mean people were still playing acoustically um, and you had to get a lot of volume out of your instrument yes um, but um, but also too well the other pickup on this is uh, was made in 1941 so it was you know right on the edge of <coughs> Of a you know acoustic and electric, but God forbid it'd be too loud. So where did you get that pickup that was made in 1941? Uh, well, just through my uh, well, you know, I do repairs and um, just sort of wheeling and dealing. Not that you become a horse trader, but a little bit because, and whenever you see cool stuff like that, you're like, ooh, I want that. Plus, okay. it, it sounds great. <laughs> and then the funny thing is this button. It says, uh, it's like you click it and it gets louder or softer. But, you know, very much, uh, well, this is what Django Reinhardt played. Hit, hit, hit a little Django on me. <laughs> thing you yeah, know, so, yeah yeah so it, it's sort of the Django and this is the first guitar I ever made really y yes yeah oh my um, so so like everything you know uh, well like well, well what I used to say is you know I can build something that looks nice but what does it sound like yeah like Mark uh, Sarah the guitar guy here at the studio he was saying you know I wonder how much the wood impacts the sound well it does I mean there's you know, I mean, I have, I've read, you know, whatever, dozens and dozens of books. And as you know, you can talk to five different people and they'll tell you five different things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but what I've sort of, in my mind, uh, well, well, who's the, the biggest luthier of all time? Well, of course, Stradivari. So what did Stradivari do? Well, you know, he used spruce top and, you know, maple backs and sides and, well, even the way he braced it and so forth. So uh, essentially... Um, but you use a lot of laminate too, right? Well, yeah, um, yes. In in uh, like in the the uh, Selmer guitars are laminated because that was like a different design. But but even you know the guys were doing laminated guitars in the 16th century. So, hmm. Hmm. Um, but anyways, but there's a lot that goes in the top and really the bracing inside and even the design mm -hmm. of the guitar. And, I noticed that this one has three holes. Now, what's yes. the uh, What's, what does that add to the mix? Um, well, it's just a design. There's a, a build. Let's get that yeah, one. There's oh. a, a builder in France, uh, Favino, and uh, he actually made a 12 string acoustic guitar with three holes. And then, you know, people, you know, thought, oh, that's kind of cool. So it was like a knockoff. So then I've, I started making some three hole guitars. So you're influenced by different previous yes, designs yep, and masters yep, yep. and you study the old masters just like the painters do yes well you want to know the secrets right? yeah exactly yeah, so oh um, i love the look of that it's so different yep, with the yep. uh and then they have a it's a french polish uh you beautiful know, is this sides. like a burl rose what or, or, is or it's maple it's maple, actually curly curly maple, curly yep. maple. and i was fortunate uh to go to a a mill down in Putnam, Connecticut, and I walked in and there was like six boards, 24 inches wide, eight feet tall, just like this. And I'm like, give me one of those. Yeah, but, uh, they're expensive, I bet. But look at the look at the way that is in, uh, inlaid. Yeah, what what yeah. is that, like a rosewood or something? Uh, that's actually a piece of Ipe. Ipe? Yeah, it's like Got a Brazilian there. wood. And then the other thing I notice is that it has a little bit of a, an arc yeah, to the back. Yeah. Is that for sound? Yes, absolutely. Uh, well, on the top, there's an arch for, uh, for strength, kind of like a bridge. You know, okay, it, you know, so it, it presses down. Yes, yeah. as gotcha. opposed to flat. And, and in the back, what the arch does is it well, makes it louder and, and more sonorous. So now, th well, and obviously that guitar, you know, my first guitar, but this is the culmination of it. I could say 20 guitars later. Wow. So, so all that you've learned has yes. come through yeah. yep. into this one. I love the design with the three holes. We better get to, I want to see them all. So sure, let's sure. get to the next one. Yep. 
in uh, <coughs> and this one and this is actually uh, this is a Selmer style but it's actually another Favino and all it is it's just bigger body mm -hmm. you know and, and like does a bigger sound. body give you more sound uh, some of it and also to like some people find the bigger body more comfortable to play, you know, because it's a little more to hold on to. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, people have mm -hmm. all different reasons why they mm -hmm. like stuff. But mm -hmm. and also, too, it's a little different sound. Mm -hmm. um, so do you have to make this, too? The fretboard? Oh, sure. Yeah. And you have to put all those little the metal frets, frets yep. on Yeah, you cut, you cut slots and then you bang them in with a And the, the mother of pearl inlays. Yep. Oh, yep. it's so nice. Look at... Oh, turn the guitar so they can see the face of it. Yep. Look, look at these little inlays around mm -hmm. the, uh, the, whole, the, what do you call that? Yeah, the, the sounding sound hole. hole, sounding yeah. hole. Beautiful, beautiful, unbelievable. The, the wood must be like a... Well, it's like a millimeter. Millimeter? Yep. Every, well, because it's European, everything's in millimeters. Millimeters. Mm -hmm. yeah, which is kind of cool, because like 400 millimeters as opposed to 16 and a half inches. That would just, drive me crazy, yeah, me but crazy. that's yeah. great. And then this is actually a pickup system I designed for these guitars where there's a, a you know a, a piezo strip or a pickup strip embedded in the saddle and then instead of drilling into the guitar you you know just put the input in So these are acoustic but you can play them yes. electro well, Yeah because we figure when yeah. you do gigs you know it gets yeah. loud so um, you want the volume Yes it just gives you a little boost Give us a, f a moment of volume <laughs> Yeah, just hold that. Let me uh, okay. I'll plug that in too. Oh, shall I play the G chord? <laughs> That's right. I don't even remember. I'm so bad. Oh, so you're gonna you're gonna put a, a, a pickup on that? Yes. Oh. Okay. Let's do this. Yeah, so in the ideas. Um Show off. <laughs> Show off. That was great. I loved it. I wish we had like t t two more hours so we could hear long pieces on every guitar. Mm. No, that's lovely. So this one is more recent, though. Um, it's yeah, within the last couple of years. Yeah, a year yeah, yeah, or so yeah. And, uh, beautiful, beautiful. Uh, okay, can we? What do we have left? One yeah. more? Just one yes, more? Yes, and then we're doing well. We are getting there. So how often do you perform? Uh, it depends. Sometimes it could be, you know, you know, well, usually each band has a gig a month or sometimes a few gigs. So, so, so you're playing every weekend is basically yeah, the, what it Sometimes, to. yeah. 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 Like, like everything, well, you know, being an artist, it's feast or famine. Yes, <laughs> yes. I know that feeling. That's Years it. when you don't sell a darn thing. And this is kind of funny because, like, show. you know, the input jack and it's, well, because it's still the 30s, everything's still very industrial in a way, you know, because it's like the first one. Um, so this is an old... Uh, well, this is a 1937 Gibson ES-150, which is the first electric guitar ever made by Gibson. Wow. And uh, wow. Peter Clemente bought this brand new... So this was Clemente's guitar. Yes, this was Peter, Pete Sr. Um, and essentially... And he was a classical guitarist, well, right? Well, his son for, is for the most part. Pete, oh, Pete oh, Jr. Oh, yeah, he's a world class. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I've heard. Of, that, that's person. why I was confused as to whether he was still alive or not. Uh -huh. um.
did you get interested in gypsy jazz? What brought that on? I um, know you do, you're involved with their yeah. programs out in Northampton and all. Yes. Uh, I, well, some of it, um, well, because there's actually like a community, like just like, you know, like I always played blues guitar. Oh, because you could, people play that. You get in yeah. blues bands in, like with the gypsy stuff or, or Django. Um, you know, there's players out there, so you can actually go play. And, and it's, uh, you know, more, f well, more fun as a more guitarist. More like a festival? Um, festival or even just like, you know, uh, you know, just like, like blues guitar, like in gypsy guitar, you get to solo. So it's kind of like, you know, it's, it's a little more, you can be a little more adventurous or yeah. creative than. And you've brought that to Worcester too, which I was able to enjoy Yes, last well, year. well, my friend uh, Jack Soroff, who I, I built a guitar for, uh, you know, is a big, uh, you know, educator. He's involved with Django and June, but, you know, in conjunction with him, we've been doing some stuff. Can yep. we hear a little more of the your Django yeah. repertoire? <laughs> It's fun. It sounds it's fun. terrific. Yeah. It really yeah. sounds beautiful. I, I, it's a work of art, the, the guitar and the music. So uh, are those, is that all the guitars you brought then? So uh, I also wanted to ask you um, where your, you know, teaching, we didn't talk about your teaching much. Well, I, uh, right now I teach at Clemente Music, uh, which is, uh, you know, Peter Sr. started Clemente Music in 1965, and um, it still goes on with, uh, well, I teach there, and Joe D'Angelo, who is my guitar teacher, and, uh, and Rich Falco, who I also took lessons, who, you know, teaches at WPI. And Were those two guys sort of your mentor type? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, more more so Joe. Like I, I studied with him, you know, forever, <laughs> essentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and a lot of it too is you know hanging around, I guess. Sure. But uh, yeah, yeah. Um, and then you repair guitars. Yes. Do you do the repairs at Clementi, or do you do them other, other no, just well at your I, studio? Or? Yeah, I do them at my house uh, where I build a you know a workshop. So your whole workshop is in your home. Y yes. Yep. And uh, you're able to do everything on it. It's really all your own handwork. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Wonderful. Everything from. Uh, and his uh, logo and his company. It's uh, D R H Guitars, and you can see Dan online with a numerous videos that he's got mm -hmm. on YouTube with that tell about all the statistics of the guitars and yeah. uh, different, uh, and he, he does a lot of custom work too. And, uh, you know, you might want to check those out, especially if you have an old guitar that needs some refurbishing or, mm -hmm. and Certainly. then where do people, so where are you performing in the city? Uh, well, I play uh, the three different bands sometimes at like the Bull Mansion we yeah, play yeah. a lot. Uh, Sahara we play once a month with Jubilee yes. the first Saturday. The first Saturday. It's so much fun too. I mean all ages go and you can hang out and listen to the music. It's really inexpensive. You, you know it's very intimate. They have mm -hmm. a great dance floor so yeah. and so Bull Bull Mansion and yep. Sahara. And then Little Red, we, uh, we're playing at Nick's coming up, and we do a swing dance in Lemon Store. So all over the place, you know, like everything, and not that it's about the money, but, oh, wherever they'll pay us. Yeah, <laughs> and, and wherever they'll let you play. Yes, <laughs> that, that too. 
So. I know that feeling. Yeah. Well, we're just about out of time, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, I, I'm so delighted that uh, I had this opportunity to feature your work. And um, thanks for coming well, thank in today. You. I really appreciate it. And I wanted to tell the audience too that this is going to be our last arts and ideas. Lou and I are uh, riding into the sunset. <laughs> you know, we've been doing, we, we've, we've done over 100 shows over the last 10 years featuring artists in central Massachusetts. And it's really been an enjoyable trip. And, uh, but we're ready for new horizons. So oh, sure. uh, I'm so glad that you've joined us. And you can see any of the shows that are all archived on, on uh, YouTube. So you can go back and watch those again and again and again. <laughs> so thanks for joining us and uh, hope to see you around sometime.